On today's show, we're going fishing with a Minnesota legend. Nobody has won more state fishing tournaments or more money, and nobody fishes like Ted Capra, the Energizer Bunny. We'll explain. This computer runs everything. Let's get in there and mix it up. And Laura Shera is getting in the mood for warmer weather, this time trying out a wild turkey burger recipe that's sure to become a spring favorite. Okay. Look at that. That looks amazing. And later, another Minnesota bound classic when spring migration comes to the Platte River in Nebraska, an amazing phenomenon occurs. The arrival of thousands of sandhill cranes, thousands of years in the making, and we'll take you there. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, lots of us in Minnesota, because we like to fish, also think we're pretty good. But some people prove it. And he is the subject of our next story, because he's won more bass tournaments than just about anybody else. Time to meet Ted Capra. All right, where are we going to head today, Teddy? Where are we headed? Who cares? To be honest with you, I was just thinking of where to start. When you go bass fishing with Ted Capra, there's one. You're with a fish catching machine. That was your first cast. I know, I like that. <laughs> In more ways than one. At the age of 74, Ted Capra still has the right fish catching stuff. Wow, well, my. Give me, a, give me a tour of all these trophies. And a bass catching record unmatched in Minnesota. World Series Team Bass Tournament, Mississippi River, second place. Nobody in state history has won more Minnesota bass fishing tournaments. First place, first place, first place, first place. The evidence of his fishing savvy lines the walls at Capra's Sporting Goods Store in Blaine. And you say this isn't all of them? No, we've got some of the first place trophies local local trophies, I got in my garage, <laughs> honest to God. Have you ever, have you ever counted how many, well, how many tournaments you've won? Uh, no, I haven't really, but I just, uh, it was quite a few. <laughs> I don't know. 40 years of tournament fishing. Have you ever sat and said, why do I do this? Wanting to win. It's the craziest thing. <clears throat> I just, I wanted to win tournaments so bad, it was, it was actually stupid. I was obsessed with it. And I didn't care about money. I didn't care about anything but winning. And I think that that was, uh, that, that's what kept me going. There was, there was, I, I never made no money at it. I mean, uh, they, you know, at that time, we never made money. It's all you had to do it because you loved to do it. What really gets me is why they, where that picture went. I called you the Bass King of Minnetonka. That's pretty good. Something, huh? Yeah. Here's some more trophies here. It is a little, little to me, mm -hmm. prestigious to, to have those. I, I'm bragging a little bit, but uh, uh, I think it was earned. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think it was earned. But what gets me is these young kids with new Suburbans and $50,000 bass boats, you know? Yeah, it took me a long time to get one of those, you, you know? You started off in the washtub. <laughs> yeah, I know it. That ain't no lie. That's what that 315 Lun was, was a watchtub. There's not too many people that I know that have the passion or the drive that he has. Ted's two sons are pretty sure dad could catch fish in a washtub. I would say Ted is a, a very competitive, passionate, um, driven person. Have you ever had a fish against him? Oldest son. I have. Dean. What's that like? Well, it's, we kind of share spots, but there's times where it gets a little bit trying, you know, especially with the, my brother as well. I mean, there's three of us, you know, fishing against the same spots. Every time he enters a tournament, he expects to win the tournament. And I know a lot of people talk about that, but he truly in his heart believes he's going to win. He's beat me many times, you know, and I beat him a few, so, <laughs> you know, it's hard to beat the, hard to beat the godfather. As the seasons and contests have gone by, most of Ted Capra's fishing memories 
those noteworthy catches and the faces of those who shared his boat now reside as stacks of newspaper clippings and aging photographs, pictures that all seem to say the same. It was another good day on the water. What do you like about bass, Teddy? You can catch them. It seems like no matter what, you can always catch them. Coming up, the heart of Minnesota's fishing machine is, in fact, a machine. Wow. Coming up, we'll continue fishing with the legend Ted Capra because you're in for a surprise. You're a nice northern pike, though. Yeah, that's a nice huh? beauty. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Connecticut. Seven Clans Casino. And by Starkey Hearing Technologies. Time to continue our fishing trip with Ted Capra, only hoping he doesn't fall overboard. When it's time to go fishing, Ted Capra isn't following doctor's orders. You need help? Oh, I can get it. And when it's time to cast for a bass, Minnesota's fishing machine doesn't ask the doctor. I just watch myself. At the age of 74. It's got to be calm weather now. Ted Capra places his faith. This bag is everything that I've got on my chest. In a battery and his luck. i got to carry it at all times. But it's, it's a problem. I mean, it's a real problem. Here is a battery here and a battery here. There is a computer that sits right here. This computer runs everything. And as long as that green light is good and there's no alarms going off, I'm OK. <laughs> and the computer is running what? It's running the pump that's in my heart. In Ted's case, his first bad days of fishing began decades ago. And that brought me to the hospital. When, at age 43, he suffered a heart attack. And I never got out of the hospital till for two months. Later, two more. And the third was this spring, uh, which was a pretty bad one. And so then they did open heart surgery. Didn't the doctor tell you he had to quit fishing? Well, that's what he told me. This might be a good one. <laughs> and he's pretty proud of himself. Look at there, he's taking line. Yeah, nice northern. Line. Bring my friend over here. You're a nice northern pike, though. Yeah, that's a nice huh? one. Isn't he a beauty? You were saying something about the doctor? Then now listen, with your gizmo on there, if you, if you go in, just say, see ya. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. It's over. Yeah. He says, well, don't you fall in. I says, well, I haven't yet, but you never know. Yeah, and he says, you, you should be with somebody at all times. I says, well, there's a lot of guys that don't like me that much. <laughs> <laughs> there's fish in them inside weed lines if you can catch them. All right, Ted, this is not going to win the tournament for us. Yeah, I'm glad there ain't none. <laughs> he just don't give up. And he's like that about life, too. I mean, if you look at, you know, his health and what he's been through, and even right now, to see what he's doing with the handicap that he has is phenomenal. I mean, he's putting his own boat in and fishing with himself with all the handicaps, and he just, he just has a drive that's like no other. And, you know, he's instilled that in me, which is, you know, good here for my business. And so he's been real supportive, and uh, I, I can't think what it's going to be like when he's not here. I don't even want to think about that day. There's one. There's a fish. Good it, one? Yeah, it feels pretty good. Good. Coming up. <laughs> Snag, that's why he feels good. Look where I got him. Get him on the side. He hit it and missed it. Nice fish, though. Got her. The neat thing is, is that I'm still fishing after all that. Uh, it's been fun. I mean, where can you say that you made a living doing what you like? 
and that's what we do. And I think that's there's something to be said about that. I mean, I don't ever want to give up. When I go, I've done everything I wanted to do, and that's fish. Spoken like a true fishing machine. And now it's time for the grill. Next up, Laura is getting wild in the kitchen. How about a springtime idea? Wild turkey burgers. Okay. Look at that. That looks amazing. And later, another Minnesota Bound classic when spring migration comes to the Platte River in Nebraska, an amazing phenomenon occurs. The arrival of thousands of sandhill cranes, thousands of years in the making, and we'll take you there. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard. Coming up, if you plan to hunt turkeys in Minnesota or elsewhere, time to learn how to cook them as well. Laura Shera goes wild in the kitchen. It's that time again to get wild in the kitchen, and I'm here with Chef Jim Kinberg from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And today, Jim, I hear we're making one of my favorite things, which yes. is wild turkey burgers. Wild turkey burgers. I am so excited. And they're going to be served with one of my favorite things, morel mushrooms. Oh, that sounds like the perfect combination. It so is. I'm assuming we get started with some ground wild turkey. Yep, the first step is to grind it. So my favorite, easiest way to do that is with one of these KitchenAids. So we're just going to kind of turn that on medium speed. We've taken some of the breast and some of the leg meat. So you want some of that dark meat in there. That's the richer, it's going to give you a more juicier burger. Okay. So we have our ground light meat and dark meat. We have our ground turkey. Next step is to season it. So we're going to start with some fresh herbs. We've got some thyme, got some parsley, got a little roasted garlic. We've got some fine diced onion, a little bit of soy sauce, and last but not least, some egg white. Okay, and that helps bind it together, right? It does, because the turkey meat is so lean, you need that little bit of extra protein to kind of hold it all together. Just get in there and mix it up. Now we gotta make them into some patties. For about a six ounce patty, which is a nice size portion, about a small baseball, so okay. just a little smaller than a baseball. And now it's time for the grill. So we've preheated our saute pan, nice okay. medium high heat. We're gonna be using a little bit of clarified butter. We're going to start with our morel mushrooms. Okay. So the butter should almost be at its smoking point, that hot. You should hear a nice sizzle when it goes into the pan. Yeah. Just kind of toss that around. We're going to season it. If something tastes this good, just a little bit of salt and pepper. All right, now we're going to add those, uh, those ramps, those wild leeks. And those cook really fast, like 30 seconds tops. You just want to kind of wilt them down. And so we are using some Minnesota wild ramps. Yep, wild forged ramps, wild leeks. All right, it's time to check our burger. Look wow. at that. Perfect. We're almost ready to finish this off. Turkey burgers cooked all the way through. I'm going to top it with that saute of morel mushrooms and ramps. I love cheese, so I got to put a little cheese I on there. Let's do it. So we've got a little brie cheese. We're going to put that on top. And then here's a little trick to help melt the cheese. We'll throw that on there. About 30 seconds under there, and we should be good. All right, so we should be ready. Okay. Look at that. That looks amazing. I don't know about you, Jim, but this turkey burger is definitely calling my name. It's calling my name too, Laura. We're going to have to arm wrestle for it, I think. <laughs> we might have to. <laughs> so here you go, another simple and wildly delicious recipe just for you. Still ahead, one of nature's finest moments, and it's a moment you'll never forget. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Tracker Boats and by Rapala. Our Minnesota Bound Classic this week takes us to Kearney, Nebraska and the Platte River. In case you've never heard of those places, it's also the site a remarkable sight of the migration of sandhill cranes. It's something to behold. 
When spring sunrises come to Nebraska's Platte River, the moment is a sight to behold. Sandhill cranes take to the air. A sea of skinny legs and six-foot wings. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands multiplied by ten. So many sand hills, it's as if there's not enough sky to hold them all. The air itself is full too, full of the dangest sound you've ever heard. They tell me that the sandhill crane has the loudest voice of all bird species, and it has to do with their long neck. And when you hear a hundred thousand of them, it's a magical sound. The Platte River is one of the most powerful places I've ever been in my life. And I used to think that was reserved for the great wildernesses of Alaska and the dream areas that we all want to visit. But I slept on this river bank, woke up the next morning as a roar like a jet engine took off. And I knew this is another powerful place in our great country. Sand hills also are one of the oldest birds on earth almost prehistoric, scientists say. They've been coming to the Platte River every spring for not hundreds, but millions of years. In my mind, what happens here is the cranes are on their way north and they need a place to be able to sit down and get all the energy they need to be able to complete their migration. And the Platte River is safety. It's, it's wide, it's shallow, it's a perfect place for them to roost every night and the cornfields around provide almost all the food that they need. From mid-February to early April, the migrating cranes pause along a short but key 80-mile stretch of the river near Kearney, Nebraska. Their next northbound stop are nesting grounds as far away as the Arctic and Siberia. For Sandhills, this is a serious business trip, the business of courtship dances to find a mate. The dancing is an expression of several things. First of all, it's always a part of the mating ritual between a male and female crane. It's a really important part, and it's an absolutely stunning thing to watch. Here, it's kind of a little warm up. They're hopping in the air, they're flapping, they're bowing. It's a cool thing to see. And watch it, we do. Amazing. Cranes attract upwards of 50,000 spectators a year. We like to call this an awe experience. In other words, this is such a tremendously appealing experience for people because they can come here and see a true spectacle of nature. Nature, of course, is always something we end up changing, especially rivers. This migration is threatened, and mainly because of the presence of man. These birds have been coming through this area for three million years, and so it's a tremendous story, but what has happened is there's a high demand for water, certainly throughout the, the prairie here. And when the water levels are siphoned off or very valuable uh, needs like irrigation of crops, man's use of water, it also takes away from the cranes. The Platte is like a refuge. At nightfall, cranes return to the river to roost in the sandy shallows to be safe from predators when all those birds came thundering in and the swirls that we saw, it was emotional, it moves you. And I think it's part of mankind. It's something that our ancestors have felt, it's something that the natives have felt, and it's something that we can still witness in this modern era. They're tough, they, they're primitive looking birds and yet they're very smart birds, so they seem to have all the tools to survive. And survive they must. Spring on the Platte just wouldn't be the same, of course. But if we somehow lose to history this awesome spectacle of sand hills, if our dawns and dusks become silent, we would possibly be sadder than we've ever been before. On the Platte River, I'm Ron Chera, Minnesota Bound. <laughs> My, the sight of those sandhill cranes, I will never forget. You should go check them out. That about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, always the star of the show. Who's a little antsy today is Raven. What do you want? What do you want to stay? Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. 
Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com. Thank you.